Okay, welcome back uh, to Mr. Hassan's math channel. In this video, I'm going to go through question number five from the January 2020 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P2 paper. <clears throat> and this question here is about, it looks like series or sequences, a colony of bees is being studied. The number of bees in the colony at the start of the study was 30,000. The start of the study was 30,000. Three years after the start of the study, Three years after the start of the study, the number of bees in the colony is 34,000. A model predicts that the number of bees in the colony will increase by P% percent each year, so that the number of bees in the colony at the end of each year of study forms a geometric sequence. It's a geometric sequence. Assuming the model, find the value of P, giving answers to two decimal places. Okay, so now, very important here. Yeah? There's a few things I can see straight away that are going to cause some issues. Uh, the first thing I can see that can that will probably cause some issues is uh, the fact that we're asked to find the percentage increase, and it's a geometric series sequence. So we know that a geometric sequence, to find a particular term in the sequence un, you need the first term times the common ratio uh, to the power of n minus one, and n is the number of you know, the, the whatever term you're on at that time, whatever term you're on. So n is the term that you're on, a is the first term, and r is the common ratio. Now, the common ratio, because we're going to use this formula to, to solve this problem, but when, when we find what r is, it's not the answer to the question, okay? It's going to help us find the answer to the question, but r is not the percentage increase. r is what's called the multiplying factor, okay? And I'll give you an idea what I'm talking about. Supposing a question said, the population increases increases by 5% each year. Okay, now that is not R. To find what R is, you say, okay, it increases by 5% each year. So that's like 100%, which is, it's the population, we, that's, that's what the population would be, you know. And if it increases by 5%, you have to add 5% to that. So the population at the you know, for the next year, you know, if you want to find the next term in the series, you've got to multiply it by 105%. And 105% is 1.05 as a, as a decimal. So this is what R would be, and this would be the percentage increase. Okay, the percentage increase would be 5%. So R is basically 105%, and P is 5%. So R is the percentage increase added to 100%. Okay, that's what R is. So that's the difference between R and P. So you've got to be careful. Okay, so our answer won't be P, it will be R. It will be the multiplying factor, and you've got to take away 100% from it to give you what P is, basically. Okay, so let's, with that in mind, let's go on. And then the second issue is this idea about three years after the start of the study and what the value of N is. So let's go straight into just writing down what we know. We know the first term in our series is 30,000. Start of the colony, start of the study was 30,000, right? The start of the study. We know R is what we have to find in order for us to find P. And we now, now what is N going to be? All right. Now, some people will say three because it says three years after the start of the study. But be very careful before you jump to that conclusion. So let's just say here's N. Now, one, the first term of the series is when N equals one, which is when it's 30,000. When n equals 2, we don't know what it is, but that's the term after one year okay, from the start of the study. So one year after the start of the study, n will be 2. And two years after the start of the study, n will be 3. And three years after the start of the study, n will be 4. So it's going to be when n equals 4 that we get 34,000, not when n equals 3. So this is after one year. This is like after one year. And this is after two years, one year, after two years. And this is after three years, n is four. So n isn't the number of years after the start of the study. n is the term that we're on. Okay, so you've got to be very careful about that. So here, n is going to equal four. And we know, therefore, that the fourth term, u4, is 34,000. Fourth term is 34,000. So now we have enough information to find what R is. And once we found R, we can find what P is. So we can say that A, which is 30,000, 
times r, which we need to find, to the power of n minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which would be 3, equals 34,000. So if we solve this, we can divide both sides by 30,000. So we have r cubed is equal to 34,000 divided by 30,000. Well, the zeros, these three zeros will cancel out. So r cubed is equal to, that's 17 over 15. Therefore, r is equal to the cube root of 17 over 15. So when you put that in your calculator, you have to be careful. Cubed root, not square root. I'm sure people make that mistake as well. So 17 over 15, all under the cube root, gives you 1.0426. Okay, 1.0426. Um, I'll put a few more numbers as well because they want it to, to, just, to two decimal places in the end. So we'll see what happens. So 1.0426. 1.04260. 3, da, 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 something like that, okay? And what I'll also do is I'll say, take that value and I'll store it in A. So it's stored in my calculator now in the memory. And if I need it again, I can use the exact value. So now that's what R is, but that's not the answer to the question. We've got to find what P is. Now remember, as a percentage, R percent would be 104.2603%. Okay, that's R as a percentage and we know that r percent is equal to a hundred percent plus the percentage increase all right so we can say 104.2603 okay percent equals a hundred percent plus p percent so we can say that p percent therefore is going to be 104% minus 100%, which is 4.2603%. That means P is equal to two decimal places, 4.26. There we have the value of P. Okay, so that's P is 4.26. So it increases by 4.26% each year. So P is 4.26. Okay, so that's something very important here. The two important points are is our value of r that we find in the formula is not the same as p r is a multiplying factor which is 100 percent um you know uh, more than p because p is added to 100 percent each time to get to tell you what the next number is going to be yeah you have to multiply each term by um, p plus 100 percent to give you the next term okay and that's what we have to be take care of and second very important point is n is not the number of years after the study n is whatever term we are in the sequence this, this n in a formula here that's whatever term we are in the sequence so three years after the start of the study will be when n equals four okay because when n equals one this is at the beginning of the study when it's zero years after this so that's zero years after the start of the study that's one year after the start of the study that's two years after the start of the study and that's three years after the start of the study so you've got to be careful about that really careful i'm sure people have had uh, big issues with this question for the for those two reasons okay now for question five part b it says according to the model at the end of n years of study the number of bees in the colony exceeds seventy five thousand find showing all steps in your working the smallest integer value of n now again this is very tricky because they've got this n here and don't confuse this with the n in our formula u n equals a r n minus one this is like the n that we were talking about at the end of each year of study so a nice way of dealing with this would be say let's let's say this is n and this is big n little n is the term and big n is the number of years after the study so when n equals one when the term is one the number of years of study is zero when the the, the, the second term that's when the number of years in this, after the start of the study is one when n equals three that's two years after the start of the study when n equals four that's three years after the start of the study so we want to find okay what um you know that term is okay and um you know, we're going to find what that term is, which first reaches 75 or is first greater than 75,000. That's what we need to find. What is a term which is first greater than 75,000? We need to find that. And then we can think about how to relate it to this N. So the first term is 30,000. And as we saw, the fourth term was 34,000. 
Now we got to first the, find the first term which is greater than 75,000. So let's just deal with this as, um, you know, un equals a r n minus 1. So we know that um, we want to find u, let's say, just call it n for, for now, the, li the little n, we're finding that term. Then we can relate it to what, what the big n is. So let's call this, this is, let's find when it first reaches 75,000. Then we can decide when it's going to be greater than that. And then we know that A is 30,000. Okay, A is 30,000. And we know that R was 1.0426. Okay, I, I think I had it stored. Anyway, we'll consult that out. I'd have it stored. Let me check. Okay, let me just see. Recall, I think it was under A, 1.0426. Yeah, it was. Okay, recall A equals, yeah, that was 1.0426 was R. Okay, so now what we can do is, uh, we can use the formula. So we know that we want to find when it first, first reaches 75,000. Um, okay, and then we can decide what, what year will exceed that. Equals A, which is 30,000. And we know what R is, which is 1.0426. And I'm going to put to the power of N minus 1. Okay, because that's like in the formula. And that will be this N, and we can then work out what this N is going to be. So then we can, first of all, we can, let's just put times here not right otherwise you're going to divide 75,000 by 30,000 and that's 1.0426 to the power of little n minus 1 now these cancel out and 15 i think goes into 75 five times and 32 times so you have 5 over 2 equals 1.0426 to the power of little n minus 1 and then we can uh, take the log to the base of 1.0426 of both sides so we take log to the base of 1.0426 of 5 over 2, which is 2.5, and that's equal to n minus 1, because once you take the log to the base of this on both sides, you can use the power law, and this becomes n minus 1. So our this gives us, so we've got this, we say um, take log to the base of, log to the base of our answer we just had in the calculator there, um, of 2.5. 2.55 over 2 which is 2.5 and that gives us 21.96 so 21.96 equals n minus 1 therefore n is equal to 22 okay a little n is equal to 22.96 okay you can add one to both sides that means when n equals little n equals 23 it will first that'll be the first term that exceeds n equal 23 will be the the first term exceeding 75,000 because the 22nd term will be less than 75,000 and the 23rd term will be more than 75,000. Somewhere just before the 23rd term it will reach, this tells us that when it, n equals 22.96 it will reach 75,000. Okay so that when, when the little n is 23, so the 23rd term the 23rd term is when it's going to first exceed 75,000. Now, that's not our answer. Because remember, the number of years after the study is always one less than it. So our answer is n is equal to 22. Okay, because the 23rd term is 22 years after the start of the study. So that's where you have to be really careful. So the n here in our, in our answer, what they're looking for, our n is basically one less than the term that we found so n is 22 years so there's the answer for that question a pretty tricky one here and because they use the same letter as and just put a capital and you just got to think and and be very careful about these type of questions um this is a, a topic where a lot of students get confused about what to use in the formulas and uh, you know you have to just think very clearly and laying out like this and thinking a little bit before you you know start okay you know the number of years after the study start of the study is you know that's not the same as n n is whatever term you're on so the first term is zero years after the start of the study and then that means all of these will be one less than the actual term okay so be very careful about these type of questions they're quite um, quite tricky and you have to think a bit more uh, deeply and carefully and just take a bit of time setting out your your you know work in a logical way so you understand Okay, so there we have the answer for question number five. I hope you understood and benefited. Um, 
other questions on this paper will be found in the playlist that should pop up over here at some point and other questions about series will pop up over here hopefully and you'll have a card here taking you to some other paper two or some other stuff to do with paper two and you can subscribe for my channel by clicking on this icon that comes up over there thank you for watching i hope you um, enjoyed and i hope you um, learned and i hope you'll take care of these kind of problems if you face them in your real exam um, and i'll see you again soon